Don't worry, this is not dandruff in my hair. It's actually snowing, which is nice because this video is about Scotty. Um, Scotty is a tale of a giantess who became a god and who is associated with snowshoes, skiing, mountains, wilderness, hunting and violence. Now this video is part of a larger series where I try to find meaning in uh, the Nordic myths. I believe that all the great myths tell stories and they were crafted by our ancestors, not just to be entertaining, but to actually have deeper meaning. And it's actually the wisdom of our ancestors that's been put in these stories. And in these wisdom, we find everything to survive, to thrive and to live in a very good and meaningful way. So I try to find them. And I already did uh, one on Jormungandr and on Fenrir, which you can check on this channel if you feel like it. But Skadi, yes, she's associated with snowshoes. So I'm gonna look for the symbolism behind snowshoes. And by the end of this video, you will have some insight in what the meaning of Skadi will be. And you will actually have some insight in the meaning of snowshoes. But okay. So first we started uh, we start looking at the only myth in which Skadi is heavily featured. And that's a myth where her father is killed by the gods. And let me see if I can just get, yeah, okay. Uh, her father is killed by the gods and she charges in the Asgard wanting revenge. So uh, I thought maybe that's a big part of her, you know? Revenge. And well, they can't fight in Asgard, but the gods say, listen, uh, we, we, we can't give you blood, you can't kill us, but we can give you compensation. She says, well, <coughs> I will only accept compensation if the gods can make me laugh. So, Loki, of course, uh, steps in to make her laugh, and he famously ties a rope around one end of a goat, and the other end of the rope he ties around his genitals so every time the the goat moves it almost rips his genitals off and he cries in agony until he collapses on scotty's lap and then scotty cries uh the, cries she cries from laughing so she says okay you made me laugh then odin takes the two eyes of the of giant that was her father and he throws them up into the sky and the eyes of her father become two bright stars she likes that. She says, okay, this pleases me. But the compensation I want is I want to marry one of the gods as my husband. The gods are smart and they say, okay, we're gonna have a little contest. You can pick a god, you can pick any god and he will become your husband. But you can only look at the feet of the husband. So uh, they all line up. And all she can see is her feet, so she picked the most beautiful feet because th she thought that we will be, we'll be Balder. Because let's face it, everybody wants to marry Balder because he's the most beautiful. But it turns out the feet were from Njord, who had just really beautiful feet from, I don't know, spending a lot of time near the ocean, I guess. Um, <laughs> but Skadi is associated with the mountains, and Njord is associated with the sea. So long story short, that marriage didn't really quite pan out. So when I reread that myth, I um, found it funny and a bit ludicrous, but I found it hard to get meaning out of it. So I started looking further and uh, found out that Skadi is also managed, ma uh, mentioned in the poem uh, Lokasana. Uh, that's the famous poem where Loki insults all the gods. He really has a, a good roast with them. And uh, Skadi is the one who threatens him to tie him up with uh, a snake venom in his face, which eventually at the end of the poem does happen. Um, Loki, of course, laughs it off and probably calls her a whore or something. Uh, <laughs> so I thought, uh, okay, that's another hint. 
what I then did is I started just saying the name Skadi. And it isn't like when you say the name of a god that a god shows up because they're gods and we're just humans. But it is possible if you say a name enough times that you can kind of attune yourself to their light. That you can get a feel for a certain energy. And the energy I felt, it was very wild but very purposeful. It was like an arrowhead almost. Very purposeful, very good in getting stuff done. But it was still not very close to finding the meaning. But then I looked further and I started looking like what are the weapons of Skadi? Because often they tell us a lot. Now the weapons of Skadi is a spear and um, a bow and arrow. Now Odin also has a spear, so I decided to focus on the bow and arrow. But I also focused on the bow and arrow because I used to shoot bow and arrow. I understand bow and arrow. And I think I understand the symbolism of bow and arrow. What you do is when you shoot bow and arrow is you try to hit a target. Yes, that's like the obvious answer, but it's like symbolically. If you understand how to use bow and arrow, then you understand how to achieve your goals in life. Because that's what you do with a bow and arrow, you work towards a goal. Now if you shoot a bow and arrow, you just basically prepare and you kind of like, it's almost like autism, you always do exactly the same thing. You prepare, you make sure your attitude is right, your body is right and you do the same things over and over again. You prepare, you prepare, you prepare, then you pull the bow back and you let go. That's how you achieve your goals in your, li in your life. You prepare, you prepare, you prepare, you prepare, you prepare, you prepare, and when you've prepared everything just right, there's this magical moment where you let go. <gasps> That's all you have to do. If you've prepared enough, all you have to do is let go, and you will hit your target. Doesn't matter if the target like is in bow and arrow, it's like the actual target, but that's also how you start a business. Maybe that's how you make a good YouTube video. I don't know. You do the research, you do the research, you do the research, <laughs> and then you just let it go on YouTube. Um, so I was thinking maybe, also because like Spearhead, that's how she feels, maybe, maybe the goddess Skadi is a symbol for our free will. Well, if you look at her famous myth, does that make any sense? It could. Because she's allowed to choose, but she only sees a little part of it. And I think maybe the meaning of that myth is that if you use your free will, you're still very limited. Why? Because you never see the real picture. You never see the whole picture. We always make our choices and we're always very successful when we say, okay, this is how I want and I'll see if I can get it and I just keep going. But we're also very limited because we never see the true picture. So does Scotty represent free will? Well, it could. Uh, first of all, what I'm sharing here is my personal thoughts and perspective. Because I looked on YouTube and there were some videos about Scotty, but nobody actually digs deep for the meaning. And I think the meaning could be that she's a symbol of our free will. And the story of Scotty picking a husband is that our free will is very limited because our vision and our wisdom as human beings is very limited. Maybe that's the story. I think it could be that. Now, to get back to these snowshoes, because if you're still watching this video right now, <laughs> you're probably wondering when I'm gonna go come back to these snowshoes. What is the symbolism of snowshoes? Well, it could be this. Like, what is snow? Well, snow is water in a different state. So what's water? Well, if you dream about water, the symbolism of water is your feelings. If you have like a really vivid dream and you dream like the ocean is really rugged, that means your feelings are very, uh, rugged and all over the place and if you dream about like a really quiet lake that means your feelings are really quiet 
No, that's meaning under the water is your subconscious, but like water is feelings. So if Scotty is free wheel, which he might be, snowshoes allow you to walk on top of basically water. Because even though it's snow, it's no longer water, you can still, it's very hard to get through thick snow. But snowshoes help you walk on top of your snow. So it helps you walk on top of your water. It helps you walk on top of your feelings. So your will allows you to transcend those feelings that you already have and be like the head of an arrow and keep pointing. So maybe even the snowshoes are a vital piece of the puzzle in understanding Scotty and can even help us understand free will. These are just my thoughts on the matter. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye now.